Welcome to Booze and Bourbon, a podcast where we talk about all things paranormal and bourbon too. Now, here are your two ghostess hostesses with the mostest, Kim and Jen. Welcome back to another episode of Booze and Bourbon. I'm Kim, and I have a very special co-host today named Steve Akeley. Hi, Steve. Hey, Kim. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. I'm very this, excited about this. This has been a long time in, in the works, right? We I've wanted to come on the show for a long time, but finally, finally, I've proved myself worthy of being on the show. So, <laughs> Finally. Oh my gosh, isn't that a shame? So if anybody doesn't know who Steve Akeley is, he's the owner of the ABV Network, which is the podcast network that we are so graciously a part of. And if you don't know who Steve is, then you really should do some research because he is very involved in the bourbon community. And pretty much anybody in bourbon knows who he is. Um, Lots of people call him the bourbon Sasquatch. Uh, Also, people know him as Colonel Steve. So, Steve, did I miss anything about who you are and what you do? No, I think think that's it. I mean, our company, uh, you know, podcasts, we're known for that. But we also do a lot of other things as well. I mean, we do blogs. We have an e-magazine called Bourbon Zeppelin. We, we do movies, you know, feature films and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that we do. Pretty much anything in bourbon, either we're doing or we want to do. So it's just a matter of when's the opportunity going to be right to, to do something else. So Right. I love it. Yes, you're very involved in the bourbon community. I absolutely adore being part of it. It's great. Today, we've got a really cool topic because it's not something that we, as in Jen and I, have ever covered before. And Steve, you kind of have a little bit of a fascination with this, and it's the Mothman. Can you tell me why you're into it? Uh, I love the Mothman. Matter of fact, the Mothman now completes my ensemble. So I'll show you here. Uh, audience oh. can't see this, but I have a Mothman hat that <laughs> I wear all the time now. So I, I you know, I kind of have a look going. I always wear Tommy Bahama shirts. I wear uh, goggles instead of glasses, and I've got a big long beard. And I always wore a hat, but it was always like a distillery hat. But then you kind of get in some trouble. If you walk into Neely Family Distillery and you're wearing a Buffalo Trace hat, they want to know why you're wearing that. So now I've gone neutral. I just wear the Mothman hat. So that's kind of cool. But my fascination with Mothman is I think the Mothman is one of a kind. And what I mean by that is, you know, Mothman is clearly a cryptid. So half man, half moth, that's an unknown animal, you know, that falls in, in cryptozoology. Mm-hmm. But also paranormal the mothman is involved in all these different things sometimes associated with ufos sometimes mysteriously uh you know at these places of of disasters and things like that is the mothman causing them is the mothman there to try to warn us that something's going to happen so there's so much you know uniqueness to the mothman that i think that it's pretty special and, and like i said it's one of the maybe the only one that both paranormal and cryptids so yeah yeah, exactly. Um, I honestly, before doing this show, I didn't know a whole lot about Mothman. Um, I have heard some people that are from New England that are interested in the paranormal. We had Maddie Blake on the show, who he, he's a guy that a lot of people know from the Curse of Oak Island. Um, he's kind of done his own little spin on the Curse of Oak Island and the paranormal, but he also is into paranormal podcasts. He had mm-hmm. one called Monsterland, and he's doing another one right now called uh, P is for Paranormal. And he told me a little bit about Mothman. And I know this other guy, too. His name is Bill Brock. And he's really interested in Mothman. So the fact that you're interested in it, you got to take the show here. Like, this is so awesome. So I went on TikTok. I know TikTok's probably not the most reputable (laughs) place to search for paranormal stuff. But I did. And this is what I found. I found that in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, a girl went to the Mothman statue And she found that someone left him an offering, which was hilariously a can of beans. Hmm. I didn't know that he, you know, was into baked beans or beans or whatever. But uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's a nice gift. Right. And I didn't even know that he was up for taking offerings. I thought that was more of like a voodoo queen kind of thing. But I didn't know that he had a can opener. That's another thing. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) 
So. Okay, and the other strange thing that I found out was that there's currently a petition being signed around the United States that's requesting that all Confederate statues be turned into Mothman statues instead. And currently, there's 18,853 signatures. Yeah, well, I mean, if they're going to take them down, they need to replace them with something. Why not the Mothman? I mean, so you're an advocate for this. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I'm jealous of uh, McNew, my co-host on the Bourbon Daily, because she's been to the Mothman uh, statue. I have not, which kind of bums me out because my family, we're into visiting quirky things like that. I wasn't into Mothman when we were in West Virginia. Otherwise, for sure, that would have been on my list of things, must things to do. But we didn't go there, and now I'm bummed, and I got to get, I gotta get there at some point for sure. You are definitely going to have to. There's no doubt about that. Okay. So before we go any further, Steve, you and I agreed upon a bourbon for today. You're going to tell everybody all about it. Yes. It is Little Book, which is a great series done by Freddie No, the eighth generation distiller who is currently serving under his father, who is the master distiller for Jim Beam. And Freddie No will follow him. And what I love about Freddie No is he's so creative And this was his pet project, the thing that he took upon himself to do when he was coming into Beam. And it's a a blended series. So this one blends a four-year brown rice uh, whiskey, seven-year-old straight uh, Kentucky bourbon, and an eight-year-old Kentucky straight rye. So it, it puts those three things together. And and the reason why he chose those, because those were all projects as he was learning the business, he actually worked with his father on. So the mm-hmm. first two were things that he was serving as an understudy with his dad, the eight-year-old and the seven-year-old, the bourbon and the rye. And then uh, the four-year-old was the first one where his dad kind of stood back and let him take the lead on something. So that was the four-year uh, brown rice whiskey. I can't wait. So this is obviously a very special occasion because this was sitting in my liquor cabinet. Um, mm-hmm. I had not broken the seal on it, so I officially broke the seal. Okay. Can I do a cork pop with this one? Let's see Sorry. what you can do. Okay. Okay, that was really good. That's, that was good. That's classic. <laughs> my bottle has been opened, so this is I my second bottle of this, but this one's about mm, two-thirds full. So let's okay. see how I do. That was good too. That was good too. I th- you got me though. Yours was yours was better. It had a really high pitch it pop did. to it. Mine was reverse to that, which are the same exact same bottle, just different fill levels. But mine was more base. If you know <laughs> yeah, that. it was. It was you're right, right. Yours, you more tenor. And mine was base. So, oh my gosh, that smells amazing. It, it smells is. very different than Chapter Three for yeah. obvious oh, reasons. Yeah. But yeah. wow. Okay, so you've had it before. What do you think of it? Oh, I love it. I, uh, I'm a fan of the series. Matter of fact, I, I get two, at least two bottles every year because I do keep one. So I have an unopened bottle of one, two, three, and now four. And it's the only thing that I collect. Uh, you know, I have a big collection and a lot of it's unopened only because I haven't gotten to it yet. This would be one of the things that if you came over and you're like, let's open up that, you know, and cause I only have one, I have one open bottle of chapter one and then the one close. If we the, the open bottle, I would be like, I can't open that one. I want to, I want to save, I want to open them all at some point and do like a side by side by side over the years. But yeah. I think that each year he's topped himself. So I, I, as much as I love chapter three, I think chapter four is even better. So. Okay. Okay. I'm going in for a sip. All right, here we go. Wow. It's good stuff, right? Yeah. And Kimmy, that comes in at wow. 122.8 proof too. Yeah. Pretty high proof, but it drinks, you know, it drinks like a sipper. It drinks like one you could sit there. It, I mean, it warms you up nicely, but it's not overpowering by any means. No. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. Okay. Sold. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Really good stuff. That might be a new favorite. Yeah. I'm my telling you. It's going to be really jealous. Uh, hide it from him. Don't, don't <laughs> even let him know. To, to, uh, yeah. If he asks about it, it'll be like that one. Ugh, no, that's bad. No. Yeah, no good. You, you didn't want that. probably not going to like it. Yeah. I can't pull the wool over his eyes like that. He can see right through my life. <laughs> Plus, he probably listens to the show. He does. Yes. Fair enough. I figured. I figured. Yeah. Okay. Now that we sampled our bourbon choice, let's dive into our favorite paranormal topic for today, which is the Mothman. Steve, what can you tell us about the Mothman? Okay. The first Mothman sightings occurred just outside of the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia in 1966. November 12th of that year, five men in the nearby town of Clenenden were digging a grave. Five people to dig a grave. What was going on there? I know. <laughs> when it was reported seeing a man-like shadowy figure fly over their heads from a nearby tree. 
Three days later, on November 15th, two young couples, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Mallett, told police they were chased in their car by a black figure with a 10-foot wig span and glowing red eyes. This also happened near Point Pleasant and by a former World War II ammunition site called the TNT area. More and more reported sightings rolled in over the course of the next year. The first mention of him in the newspaper came in the Point Pleasant Register on November 16, 1966, with the headline, Couple see man-sized bird, creature, something. Later, an anonymous Ohio newspaper copy editor dubbed him Mothman, likely to sound similar to Batman. Many locals believe the Mothman lived in a vacant nuclear power plant on the outskirts of town, in the area once known to be home to a top-secret government facility where nuclear weapons were tested. It always comes back to nuclear weapons, right? The Mothman is connected to, or also known as Indrid Cold, a name really? for the Grinning Man, who is a supernatural entity who grins at those who see him. The Grinning Man is believed to be an alien or alien species. Close proximity to the Mothman causes confusion, extreme fear, and psychological distress that can last four months and lead to death or insanity. So, um, great topic choice, Steve. I think so. I think we've uh, set the stage here for a good show. I think so, too. So just after the break, we're going to get into some more Mothman stories that will definitely have your mind spinning. Stay tuned. You're mad, Riddler. Welcome back. As mentioned before, we are going to get into some pretty crazy stories about Mothman. I'm going to tell you the first one. The header for this one says, The Mothman is said to have haunted Point Pleasant prior to the Silver Bridge collapse. The first of a series of strange sightings actually took place about 85 miles away from Point Pleasant. Five grave diggers heard a rustling in the trees overhead and looked up to find what they claimed was a flying man directly above them. Over the next few days, more reports started trickling in. Two volunteer firemen described a large bird with red eyes, and at least 100 reports from people of all ages circulated throughout Point Pleasant between November 1966 and December of 1967, describing a monster that was able to ascend straight up into the air like a helicopter. All of the witnesses described the same bird man with glowing hypnotic red eyes and the wings of a bat. Mary Heyer, a reporter at the time of the Mothman sightings, received over 500 phone calls, not only about this mysterious creature, but also strange lights in the sky, electrical interferences, mysterious humming sounds, and UFO sightings. Then, on December 15, 1967, a year after the Mothman sightings began, tragedy struck. During rush hour traffic, the Silver Bridge collapsed. 46 people died, and the Mothman disappeared. That's scary, right? So That's a lot of people. Yeah. Yes. You hear these big collapses. You know, obviously, they had some with the earthquake in San Francisco and all that, but 46 people. Mm -hmm. Ooh. You know, rush hour, though, that's that's the key there is when it happens. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Definitely oh. strange. All right. Well, listen to this one, Kimmy. The Mothman was reportedly spotted at the Chicago International Airport by a trucker. This truck driver who stopped at O'Hare International in Chicago on November 26, 2019, claimed he spotted a person with wings around seven feet tall standing by a fence when he took a smoke break around 6.30 p.m. He reported his sightings to the UFO Clearinghouse, which is where you'd normally go, an online source for odd encounters that describes itself as a portal for the truth. According to the investigator who took the report, the truck driver said the creature had a wingspan of approximately six feet and looked like a demon or goblin. The witness mentioned the creature may have had its back to him and that it was walking with a gait like a bird. He claimed that it was flapping its wings and walked towards the large field that is by the airport runways and disappeared into the night. The witness himself believed he was in the presence of a demon. When the investigator asked if he had seen anything like this before, the truck driver detailed a similar experience as a child in Mexico where a solid black-winged creature was circling an open field, made a loud screeching noise before flying off into the surrounding forest, similar to the experience of those who claim they have encountered the Mothman. 
gets me the most about that story is how it was walking with a gait like a bird. Yeah. <laughs> right. That is terrifying. It is. Especially if it's seven feet tall and it has a wingspan of six. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't like it. Marcus Pules, an American visiting Japan, was out with a friend near the Fukushima plant when suddenly they heard a loud whooshing sound and a terrible screeching. They saw a figure Pools described as large and black. From the distance I was at it, looked to be sitting on top of one of the square-shaped buildings. It sat there for about five seconds when it unfurled a large set of what I could only describe as large black wings. The creature took flight, circling the plant a few times before coming closer to them. That's when I noticed the two large red eyes. They seemed to glow from within and with a blood red hue. They were unblinking in the three to four seconds we saw them. We knew they were looking straight at us. We knew this creature knew we could see it and made no attempt to disguise itself. Pules describes an immense feeling of dread that washed over him and the creature vanished as quickly as it had appeared. It wasn't until he was back home in America hearing the news on CNN about the devastation of the Japanese earthquake and the explosions at the very same nuclear plant where he had witnessed the creature that he realized that he may have seen the infamous harbinger of disaster known as the Mothman. Yes. Yes. So it, this comes down to the question then, Kim, was the Mothman there trying to warn us by being there saying, hey, something's going to happen? Or is the Mothman causing these things? Is the Mothman the true. one that's doing this stuff? So, I don't know. Very true. We don't know, Good right? point. Yes, yeah. good point. Yeah. Well, let's oh. go back in time a little bit here with this next one. So, this one goes back to the original 1966 era when things were happening in West Virginia. So, a West Virginia man claims his dog was taken by the Mothman. Mm -hmm. So, on November 13th, 1966, in Salem, West Virginia, Merle Partridge heard a loud noise outside of his home. He's about 90 miles from Point Pleasant, so that was kind of ground zero. During an interview in Eyes of the Mothman, he recalled his television making a high-pitched whining sound and his dog barking wildly. After going outside to investigate, Partridge was startled by two glowing red eyes, those glowing red eyes mm -hmm. you keep hearing about, that belonged to no animal he'd ever seen before. He also described eerie flashing red lights that seemed to be dancing around. His hunting dog took off after the creature that was the last he ever saw of either of them. He went out to search for his dog with his friends the next day, but the dog was never seen again. The combination of hundreds of Mothman sightings in the area that year, the combination of hundreds of Mothman sightings in the area that year, claims of red lights dancing over the TNT plant and electrical interference during these sightings all have led to speculation that the Mothman might have extraterrestrial origins. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on there, right? E.T. phone home. That's yeah. the thing that I don't get about it. Um, I was actually just reading this morning, actually, about uh, what a shadow person is. And this okay. one girl who's really into researching the paranormal, she says she's a paranormal investigator as well, was talking about shadow people not actually being ghosts, but being interdimensional interdimensional species, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, so maybe Mothman's similar. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Creepy things have red eyes, though, I've noticed, right? that's You are correct. And you know what? Shadow people have red eyes, too. Yeah. 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 That's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. I'm glad my eyes aren't red. Holy moly. <laughs> if I drink more of this uh, little book, they might be. True. <laughs> 122 <laughs> plus proof, don't forget. So, yeah, go easy on it. Yeah. Okay. I want to sip it. Like, just consistently, but I probably shouldn't. Anyway, so I have one last story for you. This was 2006, September to be exact, in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Owl Holly, a Cherokee man, and his son were driving down an isolated stretch of road at night when the Mothman attacked them. In an interview on Monster Quest, he shared his encounter. Owl Holly told how the creature flew alongside and then directly in front of their windshield close enough to touch. They got a really good look at it, describing it as a bat-like and fleshy with sparse hair and red eyes the size of road reflectors. He described the monster's high-pitched screech that gave them vertigo and made them sick to their stomachs. The man's son pulled over and threw up on the side of the road. After returning to the location a few days later, in the daytime, they found left behind was a deer carcass that they later blamed on a poacher. 
but it makes you wonder. What right. do you think? Poacher? Mothman? Uh, Mothman, clearly. Mothman's yeah. got to eat, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mothman's got to eat. <laughs> Mothman's got to eat. So, yeah. Uh, boy, that would be scary, right? In the car and Mothman's chasing you. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a scene out of a movie right there. I mean. It absolutely is. Yeah. Sounds like a horror movie to me. Yeah. Interesting. So general consensus on Mothman after doing this episode, I feel like he definitely falls into the paranormal. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know whether he's interdimensional because they say Sasquatch and Bigfoot could be interdimensional. That would make Um, sense, right? Because yeah, for for the, the science types that say, Hey, you'd have to have a, a certain population that breeding we'd find. Well, not if it's interdimensional though, that's where it crosses over. So yeah, maybe, maybe. Does, Does it come here just to eat deer? Right. Does it come here just to wreak havoc? Like, uh, yeah. I don't understand. Uh, yeah, vacation. Yeah, just to mess with people. <laughs> yeah. Shoot okay. some commercials, apparently. And uh, yeah. Right. Make some hats like the one you've got. <laughs> right. Exactly. Clothing design. Got to come to earth for that. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Well, Steve, thank you so much for joining me on the show today and talking about Mothman. And I don't know if, if it wasn't for you. I don't think this episode would have happened. So thank you. Well, I'm glad it did happen then. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. Mothman's not, doesn't get enough respect out there. Mothman's cool. So hopefully this helps. Yeah. Maybe I should make some Mothman apparel for our booze and bourbon store. I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. That's because I showed you my hat earlier, my yeah. baseball hat. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's, it's winter time. So I had to get the winter <gasps> version of that too, as well. That so. is amazing. And yeah. it's stitched. Where are you getting this stuff? Yes. Uh, Angry Minnow. So that's where I, I do okay. my, they've got some paranormal stuff. Out there. I saw they had El Chupacabra. I thought, eh, maybe I got to get an El Chupacabra hat too. I don't know. So, maybe you do. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, Steve, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. If people want to find out more about you and find you on social media, how can they do that? Yeah, for me, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. The important website, though, when you're talking about the company, that thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, a shop, anything you want to name, it's all out there at abvnetwork.com. And if anybody wants to find out more about Jen and myself, you can find us on social media. We are on Facebook, Booze and Bourbon, the podcast. We are also on Instagram, Booze and Bourbon, which is spelled out B-O-O-S-A-N-D-B-O-U-R-B-O-N. You can also send us an email anytime at boozeandbourbon at gmail.com. And thank you so much for listening. And we'll be back for an all new episode next Friday. Thank you. Bye. Booze and Bourbon is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to advertise on the show, please head over to abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.